In this recording, we look at an example of carrying out the step-by-step -step process of conducting a chi-square test. The chi-square test is used to investigate the independence of two qualitative variables. So let's have a look at an example. Marketing experts interested in demographics of fast food customers asked a random sample of 500 people aged 12 or more to indicate their favourite fast food outlet and the age group of each person was also recorded. Therefore here we're investigating the independence of age group and type of fast food outlet. In this case the marketing experts were interested in whether or not a customer's fast food choice is dependent upon age in any way. So the first step for conducting a chi-square test would be to set up our hypotheses. And the null hypothesis in a chi-square test will always be that the two variables are independent. So in this case, therefore, the null hypothesis H0 would say that fast food choice and age group, or age for short, are independent. While the alternative hypothesis, which can be written HA as here, or in some conventions it's also written H1, will be that the two variables are not independent. So in this case the alternative hypothesis then would say that fast food choice and age are not independent. The next step is to determine the degrees of freedom, which will make sure we're working with the correct chi-squared distribution. And the degrees of freedom is worked out as the number of rows in our table of data minus one times the number of columns minus one. So let's look back at our data table. Now the different rows of the table represented different age groups, so this table has four rows, while the different columns represented the different types of food outlets. And there were also four different food outlets, therefore there are also four columns. Hence in this case degrees of freedom will be just 4 minus 1 times 4 minus 1, which works out to be 3 threes and 9. We then need to determine the significance level we're testing at. And here I'm going to use the common significance level of 5% or equivalently alpha equals 0.05. And we can then use statistical tables to find the critical value of the chi-square statistic based on the degrees of freedom which was 9 and the significance level. Now if you're wanting to know more about using tables we have more specific recordings on that but basically in this table the cumulative distribution function f of x is 1 minus alpha so here it would be 0.95 meaning in this case this gives us a critical value of the chi-squared statistic so I'll call that chi-squared critical of 16.919 and what we then need to do is calculate the actual observed value of the chi-squared statistic for our sample data and if the value of chi-square for our data is greater than this critical value that is if it is greater than 16.919 in this case that will give us enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. But how do we calculate the actual chi-square statistic for our sample data? Well first we need to calculate expected frequencies for each cell and these are calculated as the row total times the column total divided by the grand total. So let's just look at an example of how this works for one cell. In particular here let's focus on the highlighted cell which represented the number of people aged 18 to under 30 who preferred Hungry Jacks. In this case then the expected frequency for that cell would be the row total, which is 160 for that row, times the column total, which is 153 for that column, divided by the grand total in the bottom right corner, which is 500, meaning that for that cell the expected frequency would be 48.96, or just under 49. 
Then the next step is we would work out expected frequencies in this way for every cell in our data table and compare them to the observed frequencies to get the chi-squared statistic, which is calculated as the sum of the observed minus the expected frequency squared for each cell divided by the expected frequency. That is, if we think about our highlighted cell to see how this works, our highlighted cell had an observed frequency of 42 and expected frequency of 48.96. So the chi-square contribution of that cell, for instance, would be the observed frequency of 42 minus the expected frequency of 48.96. That's then squared divided by the expected frequency of 48.96 to give that cell having a contribution of 0.989. While the total, the chi-squared statistic itself, would then be worked out by summing these up over each of the cells, which gives 32.182 for the observed value of the chi-squared statistic. And you might want to take time to go back to our table to verify that you get this same value. The final step then in carrying out our chi-square test is to make a decision about the null hypothesis and hence draw a conclusion. Now we just saw that the value of chi-square calculated for this data sample was 32.182 and earlier we saw that the critical value of the chi-squared statistic for 9 degrees of freedom at our 5% significance level, that critical value is 16.919. So here we can see our observed value of chi-square is greater than that critical value. That means, therefore, that we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis in this case. And when we reject the null hypothesis, it tells us that there is a significant relationship between the two variables. That is, in this particular case, a significant relationship between fast food choice and age. Or another way of saying that is that fast food choice and age are not independent. So this is a worked example of how we could conduct a chi-square test. And you might also be interested to watch our other stats cast relating to this on more detail on computing the critical value of the chi-square statistic from tables and more of the interpretation of the chi-square distribution and p-value.